Hello, Anchor Enthusiasts. It's Steve with SV Panopay. I am retesting my, my Galvanized Steel Sarka XL number 5. The previous footage that I gathered with this anchor was, was turbid. There was lots of sediment in the water. We just didn't get good pictures. I was never happy about that. And another reason to retest is I've since added uh, a protocol, testing protocol, and this guy just missed out. We are in my standard sandy mud testing location in 26 feet of water with 3.5 to 1 scope. Boat's backing down about two knots and the anchor laid over on its side initially but immediately digs in. Uh, then drive the boat up and over the anchor at 3.5 knots. It's a rather violent simulation of a wind recur reversal. So on this reset we see the anchor remains completely engaged with the seabed and stops the boat immediately. There is some, still some turbidity. I'd, I'd love to be able to control that and have perfectly clear pictures, but, well, we're just going to have to live with what we got. And on retrieval, we see a fair amount of mud just attached to the toe of the anchor. Didn't seem to have any effect on its ability to set or reset. Okay, next test, we're going to do the so-called deep set test. Now previously I've, uh, during this test I'll spin the boat around, attach the road to the stern and pull going forward because my old propeller and engine setup, well that's the way you could get the most thrust. I have since changed propellers. I am no longer using a fixed pitched propeller. I now have a feathering max prop and the thing that's unique about these is they produce virtually the same thrust in forward or reverse. So to simplify my life, I'm simply pulling on this anchor in reverse. So for the initial set and to start off on this deep set test, I've got the engine at 2000 RPM. Previously, I tested the thrust at 2000 RPM at 330 pounds. Now it'll be a little different. This prop isn't, isn't shaped the same as the old prop, but I think it's going to be within 10%, so let's just use the old numbers. I hold each of these power settings for 30 seconds. Okay, now we're up to 2,250 RPM. That previously tested at 430 pounds of thrust. You can still see just a little bit of the fluke to the left there. A bit of shank is still showing. But pick, pick a piece of seaweed and keep an eye on it. And, you know, that'll be a reference for you throughout these next few minutes. And to, it'll give you an idea of just how little this anchor moves in total. Okay, now we're up to 2,500 RPM. And you can just see that anchor inched. You might back up the film again and watch it. But it only moved an inch or two. And in addition to moving to the right, it also moved downward. We don't see any of the fluke and just the top of the shank now. 2,500 RPM used to test at 530 pounds. Okay, right there, we just saw the anchor nudge forward just a little bit more. That was when I increased to 2,750 RPM. That tested at 635 pounds. If you remember the last anchor video I posted, it was the Delta Anchor. They're shaped similar to this. It's a very popular anchor. And uh, go back and watch that anchor and contrast it to this. The, the Delta, it, it would pile up a lot of substrate, kind of a heaping thing, and it never really dug in. Uh, here we're now at 3,000 RPM. That tested at 750 pounds. But this, this Sarka XL anchor, it doesn't heap or pile up anything. It just goes down. Anchor nudged forward a little bit. That coincides with the increase in power to 3,250 RPM. 
And previously that tested at 910 pounds of thrust. However, that was the most RPM I could get with the boat tied to the dock back when I tested it. Uh, with this propeller and in reverse, I can now get more more RPM. That's 3,500 RPM, and I I have no idea what the thrust is. I I'm, I'm probably going to think that the, the total thrust is not any more than with the old prop. Even though I am making more power, uh, the, 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 the old prop was probably a little bit more efficient. So let's just assume this is around a thousand pounds of thrust. I'm going to hold this last and final power setting for two minutes, just so we make darn sure that this anchor is not moving. Again, take a peek or a reference point on a piece of seaweed and just note that it just doesn't move. In fact, by my guess, it doesn't look like the anchor has moved more than about a foot since its initial set. Anchor's completely disappeared and I can only assume that if we pull harder it's going to dive even deeper. Now we're nowhere near this anchor's maximum holding power. I'd need a much bigger boat to fully test that. And with the engine winding down, that concludes the test. Now I'm retrieving the anchor with a manual windlass. It was pretty much all I could do to get the anchor to uh, break out with the windlass. We'll take a quick peek here and see how much, if any, substrate is attached to the anchor. And look at that, clean as a whistle. Okay, we're on to the final final part of the video. Uh, so this is the test protocol that I added after my initial testing of this anchor a couple years ago. And it's it's nothing too different. All it is is I use a a down view camera that is which is real simple and very durable. And then I just simply repeat the wind or current reversal test ten times. So that initial set was textbook. And we hear the boat driving up overhead at three and a half knots. Slack comes out of the chain. First reset. Anchor looked like it stayed mostly engaged, but it did drag maybe one or two anchor lengths before it stopped the boat very abruptly. Here's a second reset. Again, we see the anchor rotating. That time it looks like it moved maybe only one anchor length. Boat's driving over again. Here comes the third reset. Looks like the anchor shank lifted up off from the seabed a fair amount. And not a complete backflip. Did take a little longer to reset. Maybe two, three anchor lengths. I don't view that as a problem. Certainly not for this substrate. It's extremely reliable. It resets quite rapidly every time. like it remained engaged for that fourth reset. Fifth reset. Didn't see much, but the anchor sure didn't move very far. There's the chain ghosting by on the sixth reset. And with that chain going by real close, we got a complete backflip. Probably three anchor lengths or so on that reset distance. Anchor chain came very close this time.
another backflip. That seems to be pretty consistent. Doesn't matter which anchor I'm testing. If the chain comes right up over the anchor, you're probably going to dislodge the anchor. Eight three set. Another backflip. I think the camera is partially fouled at this point. It's much lower, uh, and we're really losing our visibility here. I think it's almost jammed into the mud here on one of these. There's a ninth reset. Ah, yeah, here we go. The anchor's now, I believe, buried under the anchor in the substrate. I suppose I should feel very fortunate that I still have a functioning camera. And on the 10th reset, the miraculously, the camera gets unfouled and we get to see, well, get to see something. And here we are on retrieval. Again, a mostly clean anchor. So before we wrap up the video, I'd like to give a few comments I have about this anchor. Uh, one is, is the, the overall dimensions of this anchor are long, and it adds more than six inches to the overall length of my boat when compared to my spade anchor. Next, I can say that this steel Excel anchor is built better than any other anchor I've tested. Now this is just my opinion, but let me, let me explain why. Uh, first of all, the overall construction quality is, is very high. I, I, I'm a fabricator myself and welds and everything are just real high quality. The galvanizing is very good. Um, but there's a few other details that are kind of unique about this anchor. For instance, the toe, that very front part of the fluke that's kind of bent down, that's made out of stainless steel. It's a, I don't know how they make it, maybe they cast it, maybe it's machined, I don't know. But it's stainless, it's welded onto the fluke, and then the whole anchor's galvanized. The beautiful thing about that stainless toe is that it can be kept sharp. You can, it's, it comes from the factory sharp, and if it gets dull, you can resharpen it with a file. If it was just plain galvanized steel, the filing would remove the galvanizing and then the sharp edge would just immediately rust. This anchor has a weighted fluke. You don't see it in this picture, but underneath the fluke there is a big solid lump of steel. It's, it's molten steel that's poured into a cavity. And the thing that's great about this is unlike anchors that are weighted with lead, when this anchor needs to be galvanized, you do not have to melt lead out and then re-pour re lead back in. This is just one big lump of steel. And because of that, you can assume that this fluke is virtually indestructible. I've covered shank strength in other videos at length, um, but it's, it's my opinion that this shank has just the right combination of thinness so that the anchor can penetrate easily. Uh, it uses very high strength metal, but it's got a sufficient height to be quite strong, and it's, it's, it's a nice balance of weight and strength and ability to dive. The last thing about construction quality that I really like about this anchor is very simple. It's one piece. Um, I, I, I just love my spade anchor, but I personally, I wish it was not a two-piece anchor. I, I do not need to stow it below. It's my primary bow anchor, and it relies on a bolt. I think it's completely secure and perfectly strong, but it's just one more thing that I have to think about. Golly, is that bolt in place? Is the cotter pin in place? If it was just welded together like this Excel anchor, it's just one less thing that I would never have to consider. My final comment will be about performance. This anchor has set and reset every single time I have tested it. It's wonderful. However, there are two anchors that I have tested, the Spade and the Mantis anchor, that set faster and more aggressively. Now for the substrates in my cruising area, I don't think this is an issue at all. However, there may be other areas with more challenging substrates where this anchor may be at a disadvantage to other faster setting anchors.
That's all I have for now. As always, anchor safely and so long.